Good morning everyone, my name is Ruth King and I'm the Marketing and Event Executive here at Hornbill. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar where we'll be having a presentation of the SupportWorks mobile app with Dave Hodgson, Senior Business Process and Solutions Consultant and Rakesh Vandekar, Senior Software Developer here at Hornbill. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the GoToMeeting questions facility on the right hand side of your screen. We will collect questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Just to inform you, Delegate Audio will be muted during the presentation to help facilitate and flow to help facilitate flow and timekeeping. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend. I will now pass it over to Dave. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to, uh, as Ruth mentioned, welcome to welcome you to this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to cover the SupportWorks mobile. There's some really exciting stuff which uh, my colleague Rakesh has been developing. So I'll actually pass you over to Rakesh. He'll take you through uh, a demonstration of the system. You can see what we're doing in there, see how things are going. And again, any questions, any feedback, any suggestions would be wonderfully welcome towards the end. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, this is Rakesh. Uh, okay, let's start with the presentation. We're gonna see some uh, features that we currently have with SupportWorks Mobile and uh, maybe an overview of things, how we're gonna go with the mobile app. So start. Okay, uh, the overview of this presentation will be to start with uh, talking about the SupportWorks mobile availability and its functionality. And next, uh, we'll go through a demo of the mobile app with some live data we have. And after that, uh, we'll see some question and answers. Sorry, everyone, we're just having a little technical challenge here. We'll uh, get back to you very quickly. Thank you. Okay, back to the presentation. Hope you guys are able to see the presentation now. So I'm currently on the overview window, the page of the presentation. So let's have a quick overview of what is available on the SupportWorks mobile and the functionality as of now we have, and a demo of the mobile app with some live data and potential features, product roadmap, what's going to be developed in coming quarters, and a few question and answers. Uh, so without any delay, let's get into the content and uh, to start with, SubWordX Mobile is on market, it's on stores at this point. Uh, here are the links for for the SubWordX Mobile app on App Store and Play Store or if you are browsing through the app, you can just search for SubWordX and you should be able to get into the place where SubWordX Mobile app is available. And the current app, what we are developed which is available, works on iOS and Android platforms and the devices which among these platforms it works is like iPhones, Android phones, iPad, tablets. Basically it just uh, has an app for each each of these devices so it works as if like it's a native app going on with respect, not like a phone app developed for an iPad. It's an iPad app and a phone app. And uh, in terms of support works compatibility, this current version, which is available on the App Store, works with uh, support works major releases from 8.1, which is due to release in some time. So we'll, you'll be getting the information on when it is available or the, when the support works version compatible with the mobile app is available or uh, very soon. And the functionality, <coughs> sorry, and the functionality as of now, the mobile app has is to start with uh, get the list of details of calls of our database entity views like customers, organization, configuration database, and uh, calls like incidents, search requests, change requests, problems. 
uh, that's a basic view of all the details we can have and uh, on top of that uh, we can reload the list on on the go by pull to reload it's a general reload mechanism for the mobile apps and search and filter the list a display counter uh, the the few list of uh, things functionality available i think it's better if i would directly go to the demo of the app and map that to the functionality rather than going through the list that might be really easy to map each of the features so time for the demo then Okay, so this is uh, the mobile app, how it's gonna look on an iPad. So in terms of uh, look and feel, it should be the same uh, in, in an iPhone or Android phone without any preferences. I just picked iPad or iPhone kind of things to show you demo. And uh, to start with, you have an about page, which just gives a simple information on quick links to Hornbill support works and the kind of information available online with respect to support work. So these are quick links there. And that's a login page when we, we log in. This is a demo server which we use for internal testing the mobile app and uh, details for regarding how, how to connect the mobile app to the demo server will be given to you into your course and let's uh, try, try let's log in and see how it works so the first thing is there's a list of things which the app provides in terms of able to search customers assets organizations configuration database and few different call classes like incidents problems change requests service requests like that so let's say if i click on customer list you can get the, all the list of the customers available. And if you see the 41 is the number of customers which is available on this server, and that's been updated there when once you load that. So similarly, all the list gets updated with the number of records available when you load the record, uh, when you load the view. So if I select some customer like this, I'm gonna go to the further details of it. As of now, it's like a basic view of details. We're gonna improve it. Uh, moving forward in the next versions of a mobile app and uh, we can even search the customers let's say by name by company id so that's how i search <coughs> filter or search a customer let's say we're gonna search It's like that, and even that's the same for filter search kind of a functionality. The similar functionality works for assets where you load the, all the assets and we display the location of each and every asset. And if you wanna go for the details, click on it, you get the further details of the thing. And the same way you can search for assets. The same goes for organizations and configuration database on the current application, uh, the current the user logged in associated application has all the information and this is basically in terms in terms of the current logged in analyst. So yeah, it's the same goes with the uh, configuration database also. Uh, let's see some of the incidents here now. So on this system, I have six incidents and these are the different incidents here. If you pick one of the incident and let's say incident number 806, as a simple swipe menu where I can perform some quick, <coughs> sorry, some quick collections like update, accept and resolve. So if I click on the update action, I'm gonna get in dialogues asking for the details where star represents the mandatory fields and the optional fields based on the input what we provide. It's gonna update the call in place. 
I, I want to make it a public update so update call and okay I got an XMMC error let's see what he said and the same applies for accept call param resolve and if you go further into the details that's the quick uh, swipe menu and uh, it performs operations uh, as as we requested and if you go further into the details when you go to the call 806 let's say if i have a context menu where it can display different tasks which can be performed call actions can be performed based on the current state in this case the state of this call is pending the status of this call is pending hence we can perform actions like cancel call resolve place on hold update stuff like that so it's it's kind of handy and it's basically dynamic in terms of what are the list we can provide for example if you go for a different call which is in an unassigned status we can have just update accept call call cancel call kind of operations so and also in an incident these are the view what we can see now is the basic call details and let's say we want to go for the call diary a simple swipe will take you the call diary of the call uh, let me reload that uh, looks like my connection internet connection is gone for this app let me see I'll try to re-log in again just make sure I'll get the connection proper let me try with a different table later Sorry guys, uh, hold on for a second, we have some problem here. Looks like there's a server connectivity problem in the office here, so I'm experiencing the app not connecting to the server. Uh, you might need to wait for a minute or so to get it back. Thank you. Uh, just while we're sorting a few things out, um, there have been a few questions passed through. I think we should uh, tackle those while we've got a, an opportunity now. Uh, the first one on the list is, will we be looking to uh, develop the mobile app for Windows phones? One of the advantages of the way we've chosen to, to develop and create the app means that we've got a lot more flexibility to produce it for, for different operating systems. And part of that, as you can probably see already, is within the uh, the app stores, as Rakesh has mentioned earlier, we've got an app in there for both the iOS platform and for the Android platform. 
So from a technical perspective, it should be relatively quick to, to provide something for mobile, mobile phones, sorry, for Windows phones. But the initial uh, focus will be on the iOS and the Android. So as I say, we'll focus on the, on the iOS and Android first of all, and then further down the line, we can have a look at, uh, at Windows to see what the feasibility is there. So the next questions, uh, can Instant have priority flags shown against them? Um, with the, the, some of the things which we're looking at on the, uh, on the display of the information for the different um, uh, call details uh, about blocking that into different sections, so the fusion enhancements we're, we're considering in there. And what that should include is some of the, uh, the SLN, the priority information to, to allow you to go through and uh, at least look at those. There, there's potential as well to consider what sort of um, modifications you can make. So if you change the impact, if you change the urgency, uh, whether that would then update the uh, the priority. Um, we do need to be aware that the, the focus of this will mostly be within the ITSM application, but we also need to consider within ITSM foundations. So initially, as I say, we'll have options in there to uh, look at the different uh, more details uh, to allow you to, to modify certain aspects in there. So there's certainly scope in there to, to modify what we're looking at and putting in the features in there as well. Uh, it's an option to uh, reasonably the swipe option for resolve is colored red. Um, again, features like that, yes, we can certainly uh, look at what was put in place at this particular point is, uh, if you like, demonstrating this feasibility to put the different options in there to see how they're going to feature uh, to get the feedback like that. And we can certainly look at making those a little bit more, uh, if you like, intuitive and representative of the particular actions that are taking. So at this point, it's, uh, it's, it's very much development in progress. Uh, we're trying to get these things so you can see what we're doing. You can get these, the, we can get this feedback. You can see the sort of features that are going in there. And, and this thing really helps us to, you know, to end up with an application that uh, you will benefit from. You've had input to, and it's then uh, working correctly and working as you'd like it to work. So I think we'll, uh, we'll take one more question now. Uh, the questions to the licensing arrangements for the app. Uh, on this perspective, if you're familiar with the licensing stuff on, on SupportWorks, uh, it, it's either on a concurrent license or a named license. And there is capability in the current licensing model for, um, if, you, if you like, for analysts going into the current analyst mobile, the browser-based mobile. And what we're looking forward is it's a similar approach will be used within the, uh, to do with the licensing for, uh, for the Windows mobile. So that's the sort of thing which is say we can, um, what will probably be the way we're going forward with that. If there are any changes to that, we'll certainly let you know. I think we're looking a little bit healthier now. We're just uh, checking a couple of things to, to make sure we've got uh, things in place. So we'll hopefully hand over to Rakesh now and uh, look at a couple of more things. Okay, looks like the server is back. Sorry for that. And while I was looking, we were looking at the incidents tab and the problems which are on the server now and change requests, some service requests. So basically, it's the same kind of analogy behind every call thing is you have a quick access thing and you go for the details, you get the details of the thing. And when you basically switch to a tab, you can see all the details here and based on the current tab, you get the dynamic list of actions on the current status of the call selected. Uh, let me look for some call diary. Looks like I haven't populated the call diary. I'm looking for that. Okay, so that's the list of actions. The same goes for problems, change requests and service. And given that this uh, mobile app is in terms of the the data what we display is against the current logged in analyst and the data dictionary associated for the analyst login session. So all this information is basically configurable in the data dictionary like we do in the full client or web client configuration for the views. These all search views or call management views can be configured and the data what we display uh, what we display in terms of on the left hand menu, what we display in, when, when I click on my incidents, the details of, <coughs> sorry, what we display uh, as a primary 
column there and the and the some secondary column and the details what we display here all these are being configured on the directionary currently the analyst logged in and this can be configured by the admin uh, in the data dictionary and when the analyst logs in the current analyst session picks the information fetches it and displays in the mobile app that makes the mobile app more powerful in terms of configurable specific to the data dictionary what what we want and other thing is basically uh, if i go to the about thing because i have a active session here if i go to the about page i can see simple information like the current server we are logged into the current user the time of login and few information regarding the system where we display the product version build number something like that and again the same developer information what we saw previously so and the same goes in terms of search functionality what we saw with the uh, customers or database entity views the same functionality will be available for search in this view also let's say for a search call starting with 80 i can do this or if i want to search just eight for example and say one. Oh yeah that, that's how it can be sort based on the current columns displayed and this sorting works with respect to the each of the columns what we display here and here it gets sorted just because of the call ref which is a primary key here and if i hopefully i have covered all the current features what we have and yeah and the other feature what we have is like if the app is let's say if a user logged into the session and he moved to a different app for looking into something else and the, if the app is inactive for 10 minutes uh, the uh, in, in a background mode the app basically logs out itself from the current session to make sure the concurrent license what we use to log in is not basically locked so let's go back to the presentation and see if we miss anything among the features what we have here okay so pull to reload a list oh, i should have showed that pull to reload a list i didn't show that anyway i'll, I'll come to that again pull to reload a list search or filter list display counter which i saw in the left hand pane quick swipe swipeable actions on the view list and swipeable views for call day call day in call details dynamic call actions based on the current call status auto logout as i said like if we are inactive for 10 minutes and logged in user server information on the award page and also some quick access links to the support box information available only on like facebook twitter and the data dictionary configurable mobile views as I explained these all views can be configured on the mobile on the data dictionary for the mobile views and also the particular columns what we display on each and every respective view uh, other thing i forgot to say is like it's a restricted to make secure connections over https only so let me go back to the app to have a quick view of that okay uh, the things which i didn't show is like that's the reload of a list if i go for incidents i can reload let's say if some in uh, let me get back to the app okay yep we got back to the app and uh, if we go for incidents and pull the list that's a regular pattern of uh, reloading the list in a mobile app so if i pull the list i get to the updated as of now if there are any new calls logged at this moment hence i didn't see but if there is a new call it just will be it will be displayed here with all the details the same works for problems and customers asserts at this point the, the data is static hence we're not seeing but it's it gets refreshed uh, every time and that's the logout thing when you log out just for secure reasons we just clear off all the data what we have and we don't cache or we don't maintain any offline data at this point but things might we might actually improve some stuff on that area but that's that is something for future uh, to show the security thing which i talked about https connections only 
uh, just a symbol to say like this is uh, the HTTPS only server. So in order for this app to work with your server, support work server, you might need to configure the server on HTTPS with working on a port so that <clears throat> it gets connected. Uh, at this point, we're not allowing any HTTP connections on this mobile app. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, just before we go to the presentation, uh, just to give a view of how this review of the uh, Supportworks app on iTunes store and the same on a Supportworks mobile on a Google Play store. So that's how you can download and use it. And if you want to use the mobile app, I'm going to give the details about it. So that's the feature list and we've gone through a simple demo. Okay. As you know, like actions speak louder than words. So if you want to see the mobile app in action, we, Hornbill is getting ready to provide a latest version of support work server hosted on our Hornbill cloud that works with the support works mobile app, which is on the store. Uh, I, we believe this would allow customers to try the features available in beta versions of support works moving forward. Further information will be available on the support works forum very soon and the uh, marketing team will actually communicate to all the customers in terms of how to use the app with a server connected on our host, hosted server. Some potential features. Uh, this is better if Dave explains about this and let me hand over to Dave and... Thanks for that, Rakesh. Um, yeah, these are some of the features which we've been looking at in terms of uh, so further versions of the mobile app, and it's really just expanding what we can do within this particular uh, within this technology to give you the more uh, features, more accessibility to your uh, to your system when you're on the move. And the first one on the list is considering a sort of a customer mode. So effectively, a customer will be able to connect and do roughly what they do within self service at present. But through an app, and hence you've got the advantages of it being downloaded from an app store, it's got security of connections, etc. You've got a few more layers in there, which mean you're not quite relying on the on the browser aspect to, to display things. So that, that's one of the things we're looking at. Next thing on the list is the team viewer, team, sorry, team overview functions. If you're, for example, a, uh, a team lead within the, uh, support de the support desk, you may want to know what's going on in my team. Are there high volumes of calls? Are there low volume of calls? Have we got some complexities to, to deal with? Or is it all quiet? Could I potentially ask them to do something for me at this point and they won't start jumping down my throat? All of those sorts of scenarios. And, and that ties in a little bit with the uh, option to display some sort of dashboard and trending charts that the team lead will be able to see you know, roughly what's happening with their team, what's going on, and be able to make decisions on that whenever they're, again, out on the move, talking to different people. The the status updates will be things to do with the system, whether some notifications coming through so you can present things to your analysts and say, uh, this particular challenge we're working at with the desk, or there's something else going on, there's a particular team coming on board, there's an extra piece of work to do with that. All of this information means that the people on the move have got access to that, they've got the information there, and then they don't have to keep contacting the desk, et cetera, to get that. So the same thing applies, whether it's a, a customer mode or an analyst mode, it's seeing what's happening and knowing that latest information. The reporting capabilities, it's touching to an extent within the dashboard and training again, but it's being able to uh, show a report. So for example, a uh, an analyst is going out, potentially as a team lead role, talking to maybe the head of a department, the head of another team, and wants to know what sorts of general things, what the trends, what the information is happening for that particular team, what sort of calls have they been logging, maybe they've just taken on a new system themselves and quite a few calls logged. You need to know what sort of types of calls, the volume of those, what kind of questions are being asked. So this presents quite a lot of information to um, sort of a team lead view. And, and again, it's just making that more, uh, using the mobile perspective of it, make it more available whenever the analyst is going around, providing that service back to uh, to the customers. And it's keeping the information accessible where it needs to be. So those are a number of the features which uh, we, we've got on, on the list at present. Um, we will be looking at, uh, so we're obviously reviewing these as we go through. The, the general next piece of work uh, which we'll be looking at will be more along the lines of the um, 
Uh, if you like the call actions, we'll get those in place. There are a few other things there to do with the ITSM specific things with uh, business processes and authorizations. So there's some things in that to, to flesh out and provide, if you like, up to the point of a, a release version within this. Um, just to pick up on, on one of the things which Rakesh pointed out to do with the uh, a beta server, it's more of a high level thing. It's not specific to the SupportWorks mobile, but we're planning to create a, uh, a cloud version, a cloud instance, which will have, if you like, the let's call it the bleeding edge version of the, the different pieces of code which we're working on. The SupportWorks mobile will be on there and we'll also be putting up an updated uh, self-service onto there very shortly as well. But it will allow you to see what we're, what we're developing at this particular point, even though it hasn't been quite through all of the final, the polishing stage, it may not be all perfect. You may, of course, see a few little errors coming up that you're not quite expecting, but it is getting you a flavor of, of what sorts of things we have in the pipeline and, and then those will then come out in, in future releases. So there'll be a general uh, beta server available for that to, to cater for both SportWorks Mobile and, and various other things we're looking at. So we'll be announcing that fairly soon as well. So that's generally the, uh, in terms of the uh, potential features, where we are with different things. Um, again, comments, we've already had a few questions. We'll take a few questions in, in a quick moment. We'll have a look at some more of those. But things like that, coming back with, uh, you know, why does it work this way? How about putting this on the screen? Can we rechange that to, to display things slightly differently? Whether it's down to colors, location, icons, etc., right the way through to, to pieces of functionality. It's all of that sort of feedback that we, uh, we thrive on in terms of getting that, gleaning that, working out what we can do. And there's nothing better than turning around to a, if you like, to, turning around to a developer and saying, here's something really challenging. I bet you can't do this. And then to say, oh, I think we can. That sort of inspires, that gives that more, uh, you know, feel that, yes, we can deliver something. So that's all the feedback that comes through and sort of uh, drives a lot of things which we can develop within the, uh, the SportWorks mobile and indeed within the other things. So please put your feedback through there. It's all very welcome. And I think we're probably at the stage now of having a look at some of the questions. Um, so if we move that on to questions and then have a look at the other Okay, so um, just reading up some of these. There's one question to do with previous versions of the SupportWorks uh, server ESP version, uh, whether the, the mobile app will be uh, will work with those. There are a couple of things which uh, Rakesh touched on within the, the demonstration to do with how things are being displayed. And some of this is a little bit touching on the technical side, but it really uh, uh, features all the way through to how you're using the system. What we've had to do is put a few extra um, calls into the server so it needs to know how to configure and present different things. And those different things are that within the mobile app, you may not want to see all of the, um, you know, all of the columns that you'd normally see, all of the different bits of information that you'd see whenever you're working within the full client. We do need to be aware that, uh, firstly, we've got the real estate of the screen to deal with, whether it's uh, the, the tablet device or certainly on the smaller mobile devices, uh, but it's also in terms of loading that information through. So whenever the mobile connects, it will have to collect a lot more stuff if you want to display a lot of stuff and then pulling that back through to the mobile is going to take that bit longer to do it. So it is a balance between what we what we display. Um, it's a balance between the, the performance piece as well. So a few things there to look at. And because of that, uh, those additional calls which we put in on the uh, on the server side, this functionality within the SportWorks mobile app will require the use of the, the later version. So it'll be looking at an 8.1 version of, uh, of SportWorks ESP. So that's the route forward in terms of the uh, support works uh, side of things. Um, this is a question which I think uh, is probably uh, leading, leading with a little bit of customization. It kind of follows on pretty much from what we mentioned uh, a moment ago. But uh, whenever people are, are if they've configured the system, they've added additional fields in there and wanting to know whether those can appear within the mobile, within the different calls. 
there's there's potential way this thing is set up with reading the new part within the data addiction to, to provide those through. It's not something we're just quite at the stage of being able to prove, to, to demonstrate, to go through and actually go through and put that configuration in place. But certainly the way things have been set up will give you a, a lot more control over what is going to be displayed in the SportWorks Mobile. And again, it's part of that reason that you may decide that um, for the SportWorks Mobile, bandwidth, maybe not so much an issue. You're always, for example, on your, your local Wi-Fi network. And, and then being able to pull more information is perfectly acceptable for you. So um, that's the sort of thing which, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly play with that. We'll certainly work out what's feasible. Um, maybe some restrictions on it, but generally there should be an option to do that, but it's not quite through the uh, development route at this point. Um, it is certainly whenever we have some uh, documentation to do with this, it can also help just to you know explain where these things are, uh, how it's going to uh, be used, and how you can control that within the, the system as well. Um, a question about uh, a knowledge base articles related to incidents. Um, there is uh, a potential to include uh, functionality from the knowledge base and displaying that within the mobile. Again, that's probably going to be a little bit further down the line. It's, it's just being aware of what sort of information is going to be transmitted there and in terms of additional content, etc. It should be feasible to put that in, but as I say, that's something we can certainly uh, consider going forward with the uh, uh, in terms of feature to put onto the system. Uh, a next question is to do with uh, logging or updating from mailboxes or emailing customers. Again, this is something which we have we, we've discussed uh, and and sort of looking well what feasibility there is from uh, from that perspective. But uh, it's one thing from you're working on a mobile and then you're, you're dipping in and out of email. And again, it's just considering if you like the the information is going to be transmitted through to the mobile. So from, a, again, a technical perspective, it, it should be feasible to do that, but there will be different ways of, of, of handling that, there'll be different ways of presenting it. So it, it's certainly possible to look at. It's not quite within a, if you like, a release version one of this, but it's something we can look at uh, moving down the line uh, to put into the system. Um, Okay, there's one question about the uh, logout for named user licenses. The, the system which uh, was demonstrated in terms of being able to log out and close the particular session um, should effectively relinqu relinquish that session. In terms of working with named user license, again, not quite at that stage within the development to be able to prove that, but uh, it is something we can look at with, with how that will work later on. Questions about branding. Uh, not really on the list, to be honest, at this particular point. Again, this is the sort of thing which uh, your analysts will be looking at. It's slightly different from a customer portal where it's a little bit further afield. This is more uh, within the analysts looking at it, so it's not really a uh, sort of area we'll be looking at to put different branding in there. Um, whether it's feasible, haven't really investigated that, but it's the sort of thing which uh, could be considered, but it's really not on the list at this particular point. Um, So, okay, so the other questions are basically things which I think we've, we've tackled to do with both email and configuring. So those are really the questions which have come through. Uh, I think, as I mentioned before, um, the main thing is we'll get information through to you at um, the uh, to do with the beta server. We'll let you log into that. You obviously go onto the app stores now and see the particular app. We'll send you the details through to uh, up through of the, the beta server, we'll be able to connect to that and, and start seeing you know, what can be done in there. You know, connecting to that data. It's obviously you know, a complete system of uh, sample information in there. It's not going to connect to your live system. As I say, there's still a version requirement that it's on. Uh, you'd be working on a SportWorks 8.1 for that. Uh, but if you connect to the beta system, uh, it will allow you to play around with the different lists, see what information is displayed, um, the various actions you can perform, the different things, the swipe options, the refresh options, the different call actions as well. So there are quite a few different things in there for you to go in and have a look at. And uh, that's the sort of thing which, uh, you know, again, gives you the flavor of what's in there, lets you know what we're working on, but it also gives you an opportunity to come back during the, the development phase of this, the beta phase, to be able to say, here's a question, how about this, how about that? So again, that feedback would be really useful to have. Uh, one more question has just come in about uh, a time frame for the beta server uh, will be active for. 
Uh, if I turn that around a little bit, we're going to have it available fairly shortly. So we'll probably look at the next few weeks to put that in place. We'll send that information through uh, as soon as it comes. The, the concept behind the beta server is more of a longer term thing. So at this particular point, we're looking at um, the, uh, the mobile app, the, the self-service. But there are other things as well on the platform side we developed. We had a, a webinar session uh, a while ago to do with particular features on the on the profiles, etc. How you can filter those, how you can mark them as deactivated, etc. How you can create sort of favorite lists almost. So those are sorts of things which you'll be able to go onto the beta server and have a look at. So the intent is that that beta server will be available sort of ongoing. It will be updated on a uh, if you like as and when basis, depending on what features we've got at a certain stage, we can put those out. You'll then be able to go in, play with those, and give us the feedback. So it's not really a, a time-bound uh, scenario. It's more of a case of it's there. It'd be more sort of longer term from, from that perspective to be able to go and have a look at. Um, one thing that's come up, it's actually come up in uh, a mention earlier as well, is about the uh, operation of the SupportWorks mobile app with, with Service Manager. And this is going a little bit outside of, if you like, the, the SupportWorks arena. And... The, just to distinguish without going too much into, if you like, the, the Hornbill Service Management perspective, the support works as one particular application or application suite, the various things we provide on that uh, platform. The Hornbill Service Manager is a different suite, and because of that, it would probably be a separate implementation to give you sort of connectivity and, and features within the connecting through to the Hornbill Service Manager. There is indeed an app available for that at present. Uh, that's probably a separate contact with you to take you through some of the features functionality in that one and to, to consider what things are, are in the pipeline moving forward on the service manager side. Uh, the question, uh, another one came up to do with the cost aspect. The, it, this really ties back to the licensing perspective, which we're, we're trying to keep pretty well within what we're doing at present in the license in terms of the uh, uh, the different types of uh, license you have on support work server so it's really not a question of whether the actual mobile app has a particular cost it's more a case of the licenses as per all the current uh, literature to do with that the, there's obviously a cost in there for your analyst connecting so it shouldn't really have a, a big increase in terms of cost but that all depends on your usage whether that usage is changing because you've got the mobile app but it's really down to the analyst licensing perspective on the on the system so that's to say, going through uh, the questions on the list, uh, I'd just like to thank you for your input. Thank you for your, your feedback. Um, these questions I mentioned before, they're really valuable to us. I've been scribbling a few notes down, so I'll certainly be going away and making a few more notes based on this. Uh, it's great to have that, uh, that feedback and keep that coming, keep it coming through. We'll be able to review and uh, augment things as we go through on the uh, uh, through the development phase. We will, of course, let you know with the beta server when that becomes available so you can get your hands on, get a new piece of kit, new, something to play with, and hopefully that will have uh, wonderful feedback as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dave and Rakesh, for taking us through that presentation. I hope everyone found it useful. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or your relationship manager. The recording will be made available on the customer forum throughout the Support Works YouTube channel shortly. Finally, thank you everyone for your time today. We're looking forward to seeing you attend the next Hornbull Academy. On the 23rd of March, we will be hearing, from customer, hearing a customer success story from Louise John at Essex Council. Goodbye.